The earthworm is extremely important in the soil. The, they actually, the earthworm creates an environment for all the other living organisms that are under the soil. The Actomycetes, which is a, it's a bacterial fungal-like organism. When you dig, when you dig a, a nice healthy soil up and you get that, that earthy smell, that is the Actomycetes that are in the soil. That dig. And the Actomycetes actually, along with the earthworms, produce antibiotics. There is so much beneficial bacteria produced with an earthworm that your bad bacteria find it very, very difficult to live in those type of environments. So when an earthworm is digging its way through the soil, munching away, in behind its mouth it has calciferous glands and that excretes liquid calcium carbonate into the soil as the worm is eating it, which stops the acidity of the soil from burning out the intestinal tract of the worm. Now, also inside that worm, there are about 474 million bacteria in one single worm from one end to the other. And so they are getting passed out with the worm casting. When the worm casting comes out the other end of the worm, it is always seven pH neutral, which is converting the acidity of the soil back down to where all the organisms like it. Now, when you get these, um, these bad pathogens and what have you, they like an anaerobic or airless environment to live in, but the earthworm creates an aerobic, a highly aerated environment. So the pathogens of bad bacteria cannot survive in those sort of areas or do not like it. So they're not so prevalent. So, you know, you get um, like uh, teramycin, um, uh, there's a streptomycin that is, a, that is um, an antibiotic that's that actually produced by the actinomycetes. But um, there are several um, antibiotics that were originally extracted from the soil that earthworms are actually producing, but now they're made artificially in, in laboratories. So that's where our antibiotics first came from, which is incredible with that little creature. And if you have 20 worms in a spade square, you multiply that out to a hectare, that will give you around about um, 5 million worms to a hectare. And if you weighed those worms, they're a bit like people, there's tall ones, short ones, long ones, fat ones, skinny ones. You'll get about 3.3 tonne of worms to a hectare. And they turn over, in a good healthy soil, they turn over their own body weight every day in worm castings. You'll see the worm castings on the surface of the soil, the little round bumpy lumps, but they're also worm castings down and through the burrows when the, when the worm's digging its way through. So you're looking at around about 3.3 tonnes of worm castings and earthworms, earthworks getting turned over every hectare per day. That's 1,205 tonnes a year. Now those worms, when they're munching their way through their soil, they're eating bacteria, they're eating decaying vegetation, they're eating all sorts of things like that. So they're actually collecting and breaking down a lot of mineral, excreting it into the castings that the plant cannot get to. So it's not plant available. So they will produce actually 12 ton of nitrogen per hectare per year from those 20 worms in a spade square. So, you know, you, you, that's a huge amount of, of nitrogen per year. And also there are three different types of um, nitrogen available bacteria that work in with the, with the earthworm and that is part of their digestive tract. And then when it comes out into the soil, it get, they get excreted into the, um, into the worm casting. Now the first type of bacteria, stage one or however you would like to call it, that um, extracts the, the nitrogen from the actual worm casting. The second one uses oxygen combines that with that nitrogen to fo form nitrate. But then the third one adds extra, nitri uh, extra oxygen to that nitrogen-oxygen mixture to produce nitrite. And the nitrite is the plant available form of nitrogen. So you've got those three different nitrogen availability bacteria working along behind an earthworm to help to feed your plants. Also where the worm burrow goes down through, they excrete a mucus to stop it from wearing them out as they're crawling through the soil. They've got cilia, which is hairs on the sides of them, and the worm acts like a piston going in and out, muscular to pull itself through the soil, but also these cilia, the hairs hold it in place, but it excretes this mucus as it goes along. 
and that mucus is very, very high in nitrates. And that enables the plants, the plant roots to follow those, those burrows, collecting the nitrates and everything all on the way through, and it makes it easier for the plant to grow too. In a, in a nice friable soil, an earthworm can burrow up to 300 mils in an hour, which is quite incredible for a little creature like that. Aristotle once called them the, the lungs and the intestines of the earth. They are breaking down all these uh, bits of rotting vegetation, etc., combining that in with the soil. Their burrows are helping with the drainage in the soil. At the moment, for the last two months, we've had a high pressure zone over us here in Northland. When a low pressure zone comes across, it will actually pull that air out of the ground, sucks the air out. That's why Aristotle called them the lungs of the earth. When a high pressure zone comes again, it pushes that air back down into the, into the burrows, the earthworm burrows in the soil. 76% of what we're breathing is nitrogen. So that nitrogen is getting down and around the rhizosphere, the root zone of the plants. And also the antibiotic um, qualities of the, the worm castings, etc. Um, like I said, erythromycin, etc. That originally came from the soil that earthworms produced. So, you know, the, there's health benefits, there's soil benefits, and biological living benefits for earthworms. <laughs>